So now we've got this problem uh, given, we've got an imaginary zero, given that negative 3i is a zero of this polynomial, which is really long, um, find all the other zeros. So to get this started, whoops, stepping on the cords again, notice that the coefficients in p of x are all real numbers. So there's a conjugate zeros theorem that says if you're looking at a polynomial with all zero, um, all real coefficients and you know that you have an imaginary zero, then those imaginary zeros have to come in, in conjugate pairs. So since negative 3i is a zero, and because these, this has all real coefficients, that implies that the conjugate, so if negative 3i is a zero, that implies that the conjugate, which is positive 3i, is also a zero. Using the factor theorem, this means that x minus negative 3i is a factor, and since 3i is also a zero, x minus positive 3i is a factor. Okay, if you're working on these problems in my math lab, um, you may see that they'll use uh, synthetic division to d divide out negative 3i and then positive 3i. Um, what I prefer to do with these conjugate, or, or sorry, with these um, imaginary zeros that come in conjugate pairs, is I like to go ahead and identify the corresponding factors, find their product, so in this case, uh, x plus 3i and x minus 3i, go ahead and multiply that out, which, okay, let's do that. So I'll use the old FOIL method. So x times x, which would be x squared, minus 3ix plus 3ix. So notice that those will cancel. And then minus 9, negative because it's positive 3 times negative 3, so negative 9i times i, i squared. Okay. But that's x squared minus 9 times, remember that i is defined as the square root of negative 1. So i squared is equal to negative 1. So this i squared right here is equal to negative 1. So this is minus 9 times negative 1. So the product of these the factors is actually x squared plus 9. Now. Each of those are our factors of this polynomial according to the factor theorem, which means their product would have to be a factor. I mean, what this means, I guess, let me take the big picture here, is that p of x is equal to x plus 3i times x minus 3i times something else, some mystery polynomial here. And I would really like to find out what that polynomial right there is. Okay, well, we could go and multiply these guys. That's what we just did. We showed that this x plus 3i times x minus 3i, if you multiply it, equals x squared plus 9 times, like I said, some mystery polynomial here. So what I like to do, instead of the way that you, you may be shown in my math lab, is to, instead of dividing individually by x plus 3i and then x minus 3i, I'll just divide by x squared plus 9. And that way I only have to divide once. I can divide out both factors at the same time. That lets you avoid having to do synthetic division with the imaginary numbers. It gets maybe a little bit messy. Um, the downside is I'm going to have to use long division because this is degree 2. I can't use synthetic division. But the upside is you only have to divide once. So this is the way I'm going to approach it. I'm going to take this long polynomial p of x divide it by x squared plus 9, and then I know that whatever I get is the remaining factor, which should be degree 2, right, because this is degree 4 originally. If we divide out a quadratic factor, then what we're left with is two more degrees, right, out of the overall four degrees. Okay, I'm going to need some of this space, so I'm going to get rid of some of this. But I do want to write as a reminder, so the plan for what we're doing here is saying p of x is equal to x squared plus 9 oops, times something. 
and we're dividing by x squared plus 9 to find this missing piece right here. Okay. So we've got to do some long division. So I'll put x squared plus 9 here. That's being divided into p of x. So now I've got to copy down this whole long polynomial here. Make sure you do this carefully, because if you get one of these coefficients wrong, it messes everything up. OK. So each individual step, when you're doing this long division, you divide just the leading terms. So we start out dividing just 2x to the fourth by x squared. So that gives you 2x squared. So I'll put that here. Multiply 2x squared times x squared plus 9. So 2x squared times x squared gives me 2x to the fourth. 2x squared times 9 gives me 18x squared. So make sure you put that in the right column here, 18x squared, and subtract from what's above. So when I subtract, the leading term goes away, which it always should. 9x cubed minus, there are no x cubes to subtract from it, so that's just going to come straight down. 13x squared minus 18x squared, so that's negative 5x squared. And then I'll bring the rest of this straight down. 81x minus 45. Okay, got to go around again. So divide just the leading terms. This time it's 9x cubed divided by x squared. And so that's 9x to the first, so that goes here. Multiply 9x times x squared plus 9, so 9x times x squared, and 9x times 9, and subtract from what's above. So 9x cubed minus 9x cubed, that's gone. Negative 5x squared minus nothing, so that just comes down. 81x minus 81x, so that's gone. The minus 45 just comes straight down. Okay, the degrees are the same, so we have to go around this uh, cycle one more time. This time it's negative 5x squared for the leading term divided by x squared. So that gives us negative 5. Multiply negative 5 times the x squared plus 9. So negative 5 times x squared and negative 5 times 9. And that's exactly equal to what's above it. So we get a remainder of 0. Which, yeah, now that we think about it, we sh we're supposed to get 0 remainder because x squared plus 9 is supposed to be a factor of the polynomial. So we've just confirmed it. But yeah, negative 5x squared plus 5x squared and negative 45 plus 45 when you distribute this negative. So the remainder is 0 like we expected. And the quotient which is our missing factor right here, is that 2x squared plus 9x minus 5. So I can fill that in now. We figured that out by dividing both sides by x squared plus 9. So the missing factor is 2x squared plus 9x minus 5. Okay. So the hard part's over. Now we got to just think back to, okay, so what was the question? It's find all the other zeros. So set this equal to zero. When you set this factor equal to zero, you're just going to get, well, here, it's kind of, might be a good idea to show what you get. So x squared plus 9 equals zero. Subtract 9 from both sides, then x squared equals negative 9. Take the square root of both sides, x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 9, which is 3i. And then, yeah, so this didn't really need to be done. We knew that we had these two zeros, and we knew that's where this factor x squared plus 9 came from. But it's just nice uh, to solve this and see that it comes full circle. And that way it just confirms what we just did. OK, so now what we're mostly concerned with is setting this quadratic expression equal to 0 and finding the two remaining zeros for this degree 4 polynomial. We have two of them. We're looking for two more that are going to come out of this uh, quadratic expression here. Um, if we want to factor it, I, I believe that this one is factorable. 
if I use the old AC method for factoring, and you guys are welcome to factor however you want, uh, as long as you're doing it by hand, as long as you're, you know, you're accustomed to doing it without using a, a calculator to help you. Uh, but I'll use, like I said, the old AC method, if you're at all familiar with that. And when we do this, uh, we start out by looking for two numbers whose product whose product equals a times c, which in this case is 2 times negative 5, so negative 10, and whose sum is equal to b, which is 9. So two numbers that multiply to give you negative 10 and add up to positive 9. So those two magic numbers would be positive 10 and negative 1, right? If you add those two numbers, you get positive 9. If you multiply them, you get negative 10. So with the AC method, what you do is you expand this middle term, 9x, using these two values. So instead of writing 2x squared plus 9x minus 5, we'll write 2x squared, and then here put positive 10x minus 1x minus 5. And then you should be able to factor by grouping. So let's see, if we look at, if we group these first two terms, then the common factor would be 2x. If you factor out 2x, you'll be left with x plus 5. Looking at these second two terms, they have a common factor of negative 1. And what's left would be x plus 5. And this is what we like to see. These two uh, factors match, so if we can factor by grouping, 2x minus 1 times x plus 5. Look at this step like you're just factoring out x plus 5. So if we factor out x plus 5, put it on the back here, then what's left is 2x minus 1. So the remaining zeros we get by setting each of these factors equal to 0. This will give you x equals 1 half. x plus 5 equals 0. This gives you x equals negative 5. But so we just found all the zeros of this pretty large polynomial completely by hand. Uh, we were given kind of a toehold, so we were given a bit of a boost by the fact that negative 3i is a zero, so that really gave us a, a I, I picture it like you're kind of, you're rock climbing, and that gave you something to grab onto to hoist yourself up, this negative 3i. Uh, but once we had that, just everything's completely by hand, we find all the zeros.